Welcome everyone to the Take Control of Your Health podcast. This is Dr. Mercola bringing you the latest cutting edge interviews to help you achieve optimal health. You can receive more information by subscribing to my free daily newsletter at mercola.com. Thank you so much for listening. So let's get started with this week's latest program to help you and your family take control of your health. Welcome everyone, Dr. Mercola helping you take control of your health. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite, absolute favorite, and I consider <laughs> essential biohacks, which is sauna. Mm. And, you know, I did an article earlier this year on mm. sauna that I, that I think is really an epic and landmark article. And, and quite truthfully, I don't believe anyone has ever written as comprehensive and detailed uh, and how to do sauna article in the past. I mean, this is epic. And I, I was kind of surprised that people didn't really get it, but we're going to talk to Brian Richards, who I'm a big fan of his company because he provides the basis for what I believe is creating the best sauna. And we're going to talk about why sauna is so important because it's not just for detox, absolutely not just for detox. That's one good benefit, but there's three, two other major benefits and not all sauna types provide these benefits. And we're going to go into details of, and specifics. So Brian uh, Richards is the uh, founder of Sauna Space, uh, a really clever entrepreneur who's committed to providing high quality uh, resources to help you take control of your health and, and actually uh, start a, a process of somewhat substituting for one of the primary deficiencies that most people have in their life. And that is not insufficient sun exposure. Yeah. Uh, so sauna, obviously it's not going to create vitamin D, but it can provide something that almost equally as good. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So welcome. And thank you for joining us today, Brian. Thank you for having me, Dr. McCullough. Okay. So uh, where do we start? <laughs> uh, so, there's start so much, the light. The, yeah. Start with the light. So actually most, I mean, if, I'll put a link to the previous article, the, the landmark epic article I referenced in the intro, uh, so that people, uh, if they want, they can look at that. Uh, it's behind a substate, substate, substack <laughs> firewall at this point, but uh, we have a large number of readers who have substack access. So, uh, and it's available if you if you want to participate in substack. So anyway, the. That article goes into great details of the benefits of sauna. So I don't really want to dive deep into there. I want to really go into some of teasing out some of the details of how we can achieve these benefits. But essentially, the foundation, the premise for why this is such a useful tool, the scientific validation for that occurs from an evaluation of where sauna is the most popular and most popular country in the world, which is Finland. And almost all the primary basic research is based on that. And, and this uh, I want to explore with you because it's the foundation. It's, it really is what gives us the confidence that we can be so uh, spectacularly assured that once someone implements these therapies, that they're going to get benefits, not some benefits. We're talking spectacular reductions in all cause mortalities and, and just improve radical improvements in health. Uh, so the, the basis of a finished sauna, which I'm sure you've studied carefully, is, is a, a room that has a heater of some sort, uh, and that is essentially a dry heat, uh, but it, it, from my best understanding, it's far infrared only, uh, because the heat is carries infrared. There's no, uh, there may be some mid-infrared, but I don't think there's any near. So maybe you can help us understand that, and more importantly, describe the most common ways that the well, finished sauna is also referred to as the traditional sauna mm -hmm. that, that these traditional saunas use to create the heat. Yeah. The, the history of sauna goes back thousands of years, really. And every human culture has a sauna tradition and the original uh, sauna traditions are, are wood fired saunas in Finland, uh, which still exist today, but uh, not just there in 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 Russia, the the Russian banyas, the the Japanese, the, the Korean hot pools, they had they had uh, saunas actually in Ireland, like little cave saunas, and of course the the Native American sweat lodges. So mm -hmm. you you see various ways of of sweating passively in, in a inside of an enclosed space that's heated up that dates back a long time. But 
nowadays everybody uses or most people use electrically powered saunas very few people have access to a wood-fired sauna per se uh interestingly the first electrically uh powered sauna is the sauna technology that sauna space incorporates um and it was invented in 1893 shortly after or excuse me 1891 shortly after the advent of the incandescent light bulb in 1887 mm -hmm. dr ha uh, john harvey kellogg invented what's called the electric incandescent light bath and so mm -hmm. he was using uh a, a, in this victorian style cabinet a an array of a, a large number of incandescent light bulbs and he didn't know it was was he, he knew there was something special about the light and he said you know what this might be a better way to do sauna let's use this these light bulbs and this light to heat the body radiantly uh, little did he know how how powerful the you know the, the the photobiomodulation benefits are that i'm sure we'll talk about in a minute but but anyway, that so was that sauna is 130 years old. That's 130 years of safe use. Yeah, and he used it. He used it uh, uh, for over 50,000 patients with chronic uh, disease in the first decade of the 20th century. And he wrote a book on it called uh, Light Therapeutics. He published mm -hmm. that in 1910. So Dr. Kellogg's Light Therapeutics, which you can read about, you can read it on the you know um, online and. And uh, it's fascinating that there was such a high level understanding of light therapy uh, over a hundred years ago. And yet, uh, like Do Arthur Dinshaw's work and uh, other other work, uh, other uses of light therapy in the early 20th century, it was kind of lost, kind of lost in time for a long time. What, what people think of as the, uh, when people commonly think of an electrically powered sauna, they think of the Finnish hot rock sauna. So it's, it's a big 30 amp heater, a very you know high electrical use heater that heats up electrical coils in a in like a little little box that sits on uh, on the ground in the sauna and it has hot rocks on the top, and so you that heats up the air really hot, you know to uh, the the average Finnish saunas you know like you say about 170 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and and uh, that is what is the most common type of of electrical sauna prior to the introduction of infrared saunas. Okay, so um, I've got some questions on there because at least I'm confused about some, and if I'm confused about it, I'm sure others are. So the, would it be fair to classify the heat that's being rated in this electrical one, uh, electrical, the, the, the contemporary version of the finished sauna, which is typically electric, uh, that, that, radi that, that heat is given off as far infrared? Well, it's not even really infrared so much. I mean, yeah, the heater glows uh, a little bit, so there's some infrared there, but it's it's primarily heating the air conductively, and then the hot air moves around through convection, and and then the, the hot air heats up the user uh, uh, conductively. So the hot air and us being the body touching uh -huh. the hot air heats the uh, uh, the air heats up the body through conduction directly. So from the outside in, it's it's not a uh, I think when people think of infrared heat, they think of radiant heat, right? And and it's really not that. It's uh, it's it's more of a conductive heating system. So you heat the air up hot, just as the wood fired sauna would do the same. It's primarily this really hot air around that uh, will slowly heat the body up. Um, but if you had a wood fired sauna, you'd definitely be getting infrared. You would be getting <laughs> some, uh, but yeah, I, I you know I'm sure we'll talk about it. But in terms of biologically. Beneficial. relevant uh, photobiomodulation yeah. levels that's you know they're Minimum. there but not certainly not what you get okay. from an incandescent lamp or, okay, or the so, sun so a big downside of the finished sauna at least in the contemporary or even the the traditional ones would be no infrared or very very clinically insignificant amounts of infrared yeah I mean, yeah very little it, you're talking about you know the sun is um over over 40 percent infrared a uh, near infrared and and from a photons per second perspective it's like 70 percent photons per second or near infrared so if you're not somewhere close to that you're you're not in a really you're not in that ancestral context of bio what's biologically relevant and what we're what we're evolved to get um, there is a little bit from these infrared you know lower energy infrared sources but not nearly what you get from the incandescent bulb Okay, this is great, and because it's confirming some of my suspicions. So, the, I, I guess the other major issue with 
impl implementing a f traditional finished type sauna is that you mentioned there's an electrical heater of some sort to create the, the conductive heat that's pr produced. So in that process, one has to be very careful because any type of electrical uh, unit is going to potentially have EMFs. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you, and that's one of your specialties, which is what uh, really caused me to massively embrace sauna space early on because of your commitment to really mitigating it against the dangers of EMF. So what is your experience in the saunas and the heaters that are being used in the finished saunas with respect to their um, radiating EMFs of both either magnetic and electric fields? Uh, the, the primary EMF stressor in uh, those is probably electric field. Uh, it's just as bad as magnetic field. Um, uh, magnetic fields, you know, a little more difficult to mitigate, but electric fields and any unshielded wiring are significant. And if you talk about a electrical heater that uses 20 or 30 amps, that's a, that's a lot of voltage that in an unshielded scenario, um, you know, um, electric fields travel through water. They travel through humidity and the air and in, in the stools and everything. That's, that's why they're so pervasive at homes. You think my electric, my unshielded electrical wiring in my room is no big deal because it's far away from me. But the fact is it can travel through the air, through the, the moisture in the air and in the carpet and the wood in the floor and, and reach you and then increase your body's voltage. So uh, having a 20 or 30 amp electrical source from an, a Finnish electric heater that's not shielded is, is problematic. It's, uh, but it's not just those either. It's, it's really any electrical device has the potential to subject you to undesirable electromagnetic stress. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the traditional electric heat finish sauna, the electric hot rock sauna, I would say is actually not the most common sauna out there. Uh, the most common sauna out there really is the far infrared sauna that, uses. That, that's certainly true in the United States. Is that true worldwide, globally? Uh, no, but you're, you're right. In Finland, is, it's a uh, sauna is a mainstay. You know, I think they actually have a mandate there for building new homes that they, they must include a sauna in new buildings. But uh, most countries are not like Finland. And, and, and I, I suppose my, my experience is most, uh, I have most of my experience here in the U.S. where we're based. And here yeah. in the U.S., the most common sauna out there is the far infrared sauna that uses either ceramic tube emitters or, or it has little black carbon panels that emit primarily low, low energy, long wavelength farm for red. And in my personal testing of those there, they tend to all be um, high electric field and high magnetic field. And, and especially your, how you sit in those, your, their, your, your mm -hmm. back is usually at very close proximity to the, the ceramic heater itself. And so you're within that magnetic field and then without using shielded uh, technology, you know, you, you are exposing yourself to electric fields, both in the Finnish electric hot, hot rock sauna and in the traditional farm okay. for red sauna. So uh, though, for those who may not be familiar with it, magnetic fields are really problematic, but fortunately they fall off typically very rapidly. So that mm -hmm. with your usually a few inches, but certainly within a foot, if you're a foot away, it, it, it's almost insignificant because of the, the, the rate at which they fall off. But that's not true for electric fields. They really permeate quite distance. So um, when did far infrared saunas become widespread in the US? Is it 20 years ago or so, 15? Yeah, maybe even more than that. You know, the, the, the ceramic emitter, the far infrared ceramic emitter technology, I think dates back to the late 60s, uh, wow. early 70s. Okay. But as far as the incorporation into consumer products that we call far infrared cabinet saunas, you see that more in the in yeah in introduction in the seventies and eighties um, at a time in which there was no concern over electromagnetic stress. Nobody had any idea that uh, it, it was not mainstream at all. There was no yeah deep study. You know there wasn't the Martin Paul research and other research. There was the body electric and, and some you know some indication Becker. of it. But By Becker, yeah, sure. So uh, the uh, that's really interesting, kind of like smoking was in the you know 30s, 40s, and 50s. You know, <laughs> it wasn't people had no clue that it was. Dangerous. I mean, but it was, but it was there was people, obviously it, an issue there. It was just yeah, a hundred percent. Similar similar story. It's an analogy I made quite quite clear in the, my book EMF. So um, I want to get back to the, the 
far for its honest because so many, I mean, I have some, some of the hugest pet peeves I have in the health industry is against many of the far infrared sauna manufacturers for essentially blatant lying and fraud and deception that, you know, this should at least should in reality, truth be told, their, their, their company should be shut down for, for fraudulent advertising. So there, this is not true for all of them, but it's true for many, um, certainly. So but the, the, Many claim that there is, they have a, there's a lot of claims they make that I have problems with. One is that there's, they have, it's an EMF free sauna or low EMF sauna. And my experience with that, and then I want to get your input on it, is that the, 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 the most, all, uh, ex, with the exception of one, maybe two sauna manufacturers that make this claim, that it, it's, it's true that the typically that the magnetic fields are really low. They mitigate against that, which is the biggest uh, claim against most of these devices that they had high magnetic fields. So they were able to lower it to essentially biologically re reasonable levels. But they, almost every single one of them failed to to uh, mitigate the electric fields. And this is particularly true for I, I'm not sure the type it's called, but it's a uh, it's like a little tent. It's much smaller than yours where your head is out of it. Uh, and um, mm. I could think of two companies specifically who just are just terrible for this because of their claims they're making. And they, they claim that they, they, they just lie. I mean, they, they say these electric fields that they have no EMF and their electric fields are through the roof. We've measured them many, many times. It's just outrageous. So, you know, so that's my experience. There's a few that get it that have actually low EMFs both electric and magnetic fields, but I've only seen that in one that I know of, and it could be another one that I just can't recall at this time. So what, what is your experience in that? My experience is, is, is really that, and I've, I've measured many, uh, many brands uh, uh, over time. And, 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 and you're right, the farm for st style of sauna comes in a couple different forms. The, the most obvious one is the cabinet style that looks like a traditional finished sauna, but there's, ceramic tube emitters or black carbon panels in the walls and all the ones that i've seen have high magnetic fields and high electric fields there is one company that i actually measured with uh brian hoyer as it were we were together at a conference and it was low in magnetic field which was great that's a great improvement but the electric fields were like you say they were through the roof they were uh in uh, beyond millivolts and hundreds of millivolts into the volts range. And uh, I had also, one that I measured that I was given to try it. It was tens of thousands of millivolts. It was 60,000 millivolts. Yeah. It was like 10 volts. That's like a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, that, that's my experience too, especially the, the, the style that's a little more portable where your, your head and your arms kind of stick out. It's, it's more of a, usually it's the head, foil. usually the arms are still in there. Or the arms can be still in, but it's a foil foil bag. Right. It's more marketed as a portable far infrared sauna. So they, yeah, they they all have issues. Uh, even the ones where they've managed to to minimize the amount of magnetic field, they all seem to have electric field issues. And furthermore, they don't offer any protection from the ambient uh, 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 electromagnetic stress that's in the environment. And and that's why, for example, you know, one of the products that I offer um, has a a Faraday liner system that protects you from the ambient electric fields. Yeah. It's not enough to say, okay, um, let's shield this technology. So there, you know, there's no electric field or magnetic field exposure from, from the sauna space uh, panels on the user. What about making their sauna experience uh, electromagnetically clean and pure mm -hmm. and, and protecting the ambient EMF. So we're, you know, I worked really hard to provide that sort of solution and you don't see that really in any of these Mm -hmm. uh, infrared products, oh. uh, uh, whether it's, or, or finish on us, uh, either, but yeah, they're, they're, you know, I, I don't like to disparage any companies. I think there's some great products out there. And, and at the end of the day, Dr. Mercola, I think if you sweat and the, and you, you get that sweat response, you get that elevated core temperature increase, you're getting great benefit, but, but mm -hmm. to have, to be exposed to the oxidative stress of EMF stress during the session for me is like, not ideal. That would be like, meditating in a polluted environment or something. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and I don't really want to push that benefit because it's clearly a benefit, but in my view, it's almost the icing on the cake because you have to, to accept yeah. that as a primary benefit, you have to believe that EMFs are dangerous. Uh, but because 
essentially, if you don't, then it, it, adopt that. I mean, it, the people who believe that typically have done pretty good work in their own home to get a relatively low EMF exposure like I have in my house. So, I mean, I don't feel badly, although I'm using one of your systems that is shielded, I would have no, no problem using a non-shielded because it, my ambient levels are so low, relatively speaking. And, and, and my original healing story, Dr. Bercola, was with a bricolage version of what I offer now, and there was no electromagnetic shielding at all. And I still right. had incredible, um, yeah, incredible so, journey. Yeah, I, I, I want to make it seem that we're claiming that oh, this shielding is the, the cat's meow and you got to have it. It, 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 it clearly is, is beneficial, no question, but the benefit you're going to get is kind of related to your ambient exposure and that's highly variable. So we can mm -hmm. almost put that to the side. It's, it's, an, it's another great benefit, but the, the, the core that I really want to discuss is the, the comparison of these technologies, because we, you know, people routinely in, in, this, in this field are going to hear the benefits of sauna and they're going to be intrigued about it and seek to implement themselves. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 I guess the foundational concept that I, I'm not sure I mentioned in my original sauna article, but is, is sort of intuitively obvious. It, is sauna is a really personal thing because if, you're, if it's going to be an effective sauna, you're going to release toxins that are stored in your body. And those toxins are going to contaminate the enclosure that your sauna is in. So you really ideally do not want to be sharing a sauna with someone unless you're really careful about cleaning the sauna and absorbing those, those toxins that are released from the previous uh, user of the sauna. So that, in my mind, almost eliminates the use of sauna in a gym or some other therapeutic intervention. Yeah. That, that's well, my the, well, what, the, what's your the, take on it? What's your take well, on it? Well, the, the, you know, the, uh, to, uh, you know, the counterpoint of that is that the Finnish sauna is a social experience and, and they are always in there and they're getting together and they're, they're sweating it out. But I, I, t I definitely agree with you that the sauna, it's, it's an intimate experience. It's something that you, you want to have your own. I, of course, share mine with my wife, but I live with my wife. We have the same microbiome and, and, and all that. Um, it, it's well, but, and also she, she leaves, pretty, you both live pretty cleanly so that you're not, she, she's not excreting a lot of toxins. And she and she's been doing sauna for a while. So in that mm -hmm. scenario, the exposure is relatively minimal. Yeah, but I think ultimately all these things again, it's you know, there's there's definitely ways you can tweak the experience and and improve it. But ultimately, just getting in there four times a week, you know, that, that that's that's the the results of the the Dr. Rhonda Patrick uh, study that you referenced, the stunning benefits of sauna and and these long term finished studies. They show that. Uh, what you need to do is use it four times a week. Uh, and even uh, once a week is really not as amazing as three or four times a week. So having a sauna at home for nothing uh, else, uh, just for the convenience mm -hmm. and the ability to maintain that discipline of frequent uses is, is the most important thing. Okay. Now I want to dive into what I think is probably the most uh, significant benefit in my view, my humble view of, of being a, a passionate advocate of natural health healing strategies is, and this is something I'm more really relatively recently appreciated long after I've gotten an interest in sauna. And, and this is the uh, issue I referenced and you referenced earlier with respect to photobiomodulation. Mm -hmm. So that essentially is a, a fancy term for ascribing the biological benefits of light exposure to the human body. Um, so uh, optimizing that. So the reason this is important is in my mind is that I don't have that, maybe you have the numbers on this, but I'm pretty sure they're shocking. The, the, the number of minutes per day that the average person in the US is actually outside in the sun. Oh, it's, it's it, woeful. I, it's I don't know what it is. But... under 10 minutes, yeah. I guess. And then it's not, so it, it, they're wearing shirts and long pants. So it's almost no exposure, clinically, almost no clinically significant exposure to the sun. And that is, there is just absolutely no doubt in my mind that it's just prescription for health disaster. You cannot violate one of our most pervasive ancestral practices, which is being outside regularly for long periods of time without significant biological consequences. So um, 
the only sauna that provides photobiomodulation, despite some of the absurd, ludicrous, insane claims <laughs> that some of the far infrared sauna makes. That they, they're a full spectrum far infrared sauna. I've never seen anyone that is, never, never, except for yours, because it truly is indeed a full spectrum infrared sauna. And, they, and, and yours is, see, that. well, those are analog too. That means they, they produce it over a wide range. It's not just several dis discrete frequencies like they use in the PBM units, the photo biomodulation units, like uh, the, the three primary manufacturers out there, which, which has its own benefits. And I, I think they're all good. I use all three of them. I use natural sunlight. I use the mid infrared sauna like yours, which I think is the best description for it. And then the uh, sun exposure. So anyway, the, the reason why be exposing your skin to the sun is so useful. It's not just for vitamin D. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I've talked about it for over two decades. Mm -hmm. And people know how passionate I am. And you know they've probably read and listened to much of my information on this in the past. But I have not swallowed a vitamin D pill for over 15 years. And my vitamin D levels are optimal. And that's because I'm out in the sun. And I'm out in the sun with no shirt. And I'm in shorts. And pretty much 80% of the days of the year, this is happening. You know, there's a number, you know, I'm traveling and if the weather is, is less than good or I'm just tired, I won't do the walk. But I almost always do. And I didn't understand or realize, I kind of intuitively knew there was something else going on, but I didn't really fully appreciate it. And that that, that infrared exposure, and as you mentioned, 50, well, 40% of it is near infrared, of, this, of the, the, the light coming out of the sun is near infrared. Because only 7% is ultraviolet B. And uh, I think it's uh, 40 percent, 39% is visible light, and then 54% is infrared. 40% of being near, right. the other being mid and far. So, but the vast majority of all of it, if you could sequence it, is near infrared. And the benefit of it near infrared is it increases melatonin. Uh, in it's what's called subcellular melatonin. Uh, in the past, we thought almost all of it came from your pineal gland in response to bright light exposure in the daytime and no light exposure at night. But that's only 5%. 95% of it is in, is in your mitochondria. And to me, this is the pro this, I believe this is the biggest benefit of using your type of sauna is that you're going to increase subcellular mitochondrial melatonin, which is going to radically decrease oxidative stress, lower your risk of almost every single chronic disease. And I think this, this is the mechanism, maybe not the primary, it can't be because we know traditional saunas don't do that, but it's probably partially related. No, there, but actually it couldn't be that because there, you're just getting heat. So it's got to be the other reason. But I'm convinced this is a more powerful strategy to, to optimize things because not only are you getting the detox and the heat shock protein benefits we'll talk about in a bit, but you're getting the increase in that melatonin, which is going to really improve your mitochondrial function overall, increase your energy levels and ATP production and decrease damage to your mm -hmm. cells, your DNA, cell membranes, proteins, stem cells, all of it. So anyway, that's, that's a big thing. So what's the question here? The question is, Yours is the only sauna that does this. No far infrared sauna does it, and no finished sauna does it. It's it's a question of of more bang for your buck. It's it's the dual therapies together. You know, uh, we don't have to belabor necessarily the benefit of sauna. I think Doctor, you've uh, you Doctor Bracola have, have, have highlighted in your in your latest blog article. Doctor Rhonda Patrick has has uh, shown, you know, uh, she, in her review article, the stunning benefits that came out last year. It's essentially increasing your health span, increases the uh, the years of your life that you're really healthy and it and it, it reduces your risk of dying of all things. So it's really great and everybody should be doing sauna. But then if you look at photobiomodulation, which uh, another way to define photobiomodulation is the use of near infrared light to heal and repair uh, degenerate and damaged tissue and cells mm -hmm. and also optimize healthy tissue. So I like that definition. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's a recent one. I, I've just read from an article. It's it's a really you know you're using light to to heal mm -hmm. damage and also not just light optimize what's there near infrared light and it's and it's it's near infrared light uh, like you said the if you look at the spectrum of the sun um, you know forty three percent is near infrared and if you add in red uh, you know it gets to be over fifty percent is in this photobiomodulation range that photobiomodulation is light controlling biology but in this case it's it's all about near infrared light, uh, activating healing 
and repair biology in the body. And the mitochondrial systems are, are amazing. You know, um, and you mentioned the, the mitochondrial melatonin systems. Melatonin is such a powerful antioxidant. Uh, but if you look at it kind of in the macro, all uh, it has a, it has, though it's a different biological system, it's having similar benefit overlap to sauna. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's repairing damaged tissue. It's, it's improving protein function. It has anti-aging effects in the cells, uh, you know, in the DNA and the epigenetics, and, and it's boosting and modulating the immune system. It, you know, uh, people are using it for inflammation reduction, also sauna for inflammation reduction. So if you look at the list of photobiomodulation, the list of sauna, there's so much overlap um, that it's like, wow, these are probably the two most powerful things you could do for your health. And, and especially mm -hmm. since, especially here in the Northern uh, hemisphere and in, in the Western culture, you know, we have the highest incidence, you know, the number one causes of death in America are are cardiovascular disease and cancer currently, and and also worldwide it, it, it's quite similar. But in the north, uh, in the northern hemisphere, we also have the highest incidence of of neurodegenerative diseases like MS and 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 Alzheimer's and dementia, and and both of these therapies, this this near infrared light therapy and the sauna therapy, appear to be quite beneficial uh, for neurodegenerative diseases. And that was a, a later. I think a uh, uh, conclusion of that Lau Cannon study and that long-term finished male study was is not just good for cardiovascular disease for reducing your risk of that, but also reducing your risk of, of Parkinson's, dementia, and, and Alzheimer's and so forth. So if both of these things are doing that, and if it's just a matter of the technology you use you know, to heat the body and, um, and that's how te that technology is available. So you know, it's just like, well, why would you not do sauna that way? So it, it comes down to the form of the light. Um, a couple other things to note about sunlight is uh, it's not just majority near infrared. And, and from a photons perspective, photons per second perspective, like I said before, 70% uh, of your photons per second you get from the sun is near infrared. Uh, it's also uh, not so much far infrared. If you look at the spectrum mm -hmm. of the sun, it's only about 3% far infrared. So uh, we don't have much have, uh, historical exposure to it. And one could argue maybe from an evolutionary perspective, that's why our mitochondria have not evolved to harness that. They're, they're designed to harness the number one stimulus, which is the near infrared portion. And, and again, uh, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, like you said, the, uh, the benefit of, of, of dose-dependent ultraviolet light exposure for vitamin D production is, is great, but that's still a uh, a minority of the dose you get from the sun. The, the biggest dose is near infrared. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's um, among other things, you know, refilling daily your antioxidant reserves in your body to, to, to do uh, cell turnover and repair and just all the things. Our bodies are so, so complicated. They're constantly uh, needing to fix themselves and, and correct themselves. Otherwise they get out of whack really quickly. And so, uh, it, it's just like, well, why would you not do the two together? And also I would say, well, people say, well, I get a lot of sunlight. I live in Florida. Yeah. I, I, I don't <laughs> I need a sauna. Be, I don't need a sauna space. You no, know, I don't need near photobiomodulation because I'm in nope. the sun every day, but they're closed. And also the sun and all the photobiomodulation in the world, photobiomodulation in the world doesn't, uh, sort of address some of these aspects of heat shock protein amplification and detox that sauna does. Mm -hmm. And we live in this modern toxic world that was a tidal, uh, you know, a veritable tidal wave of toxicity. It's more than ever that we need sauna. And because we live indoors in these weird synthetic lifestyles, it's more than ever that we need uh, maybe an alternative source uh, for a daily dose of near infrared light. And so that's where the incandescent bulb style of sauna becomes such a, a, pow a powerful contributor to maintaining uh, our health in this weird modern lifestyle that we have that's totally unnatural yeah uh, so before before i go into one of the critic criticisms that have been leveled at your sauna strategy i want to make insert a, a note about melatonin neglect you mentioned earlier and that mm -hmm. is that it's about a billion and a half years old that's what the speculation is and it's first evolved in plants it, it, it you, you can make a fairly convincing and valid argument that is the most important antioxidant in our body. Because not only does it directly scavenges free radicals, but it also 
like molecular hydrogen catalyzes the production of other antioxidants like glutathione peroxidase, glutathione reductase, uh, catalase, superoxide dismutase. So these are all quenched uh, uh, oxidative uh, free radicals. So, and even some of the nitrogen ones like peroxynitrite. So really, really important. But one of the criticisms that have been leveled, we, we talked about at, at sauna space is that uh, is sometimes, I think you, your bulbs have been, your setups, at least I did in the past, and I think others have too, referred to it as a near infrared sauna. When the reality is it isn't a near infrared, it's a mid infrared sauna. So the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 15% of the radiation coming up from those bulbs that you have are near infrared. It's only 15 as opposed to 40%. Uh, well, it is more than that. It's actually so, but it's definitely so, not the same as the sun. So yes, let's, right. let me clarify what the yeah, spectrum yeah. is. So, give us the details. So uh, and this is on, on my website in our learn section. You can see the spectrum of our bulb and compare it to the sun spectrum. So the sun, as I said before, is about 43% pure near infrared. That's 700 to 1500 nanometer wavelengths. Okay. The This thermalite bulb that I've developed, this, this large 250 watt, um, incandescent um, heat lamp bulb is 39% near infrared. So it's wow. a very similar amount of near infrared. How That's, did I not know that? That's crazy. Well, this is, it's more near infrared than the, the standard heat lamp you have at the you know, that's more commonly available. So I, I basically tune the filament, Dr. Mercola, to run at a higher Kelvin. So it does, oh. it does shift it up a little bit into more near infrared, but it's not the same as the sun because the sun has a lot of like you said, the, uh, a huge chunk of the sun's emission is near, is uh, visible light and ultraviolet mm -hmm. light, and the the difference is with the the, uh, the thermal light bulb that I've developed that sauna space uses. There's no blue light, no ultraviolet light, and there's not a lot of red light either. It's all pretty much near infrared and mid infrared, and so the the where the sun has a lot of visible light and ultraviolet light, that percentage of the spectrum with the with the sauna space thermal light bulb is shifted into near infrared and mid infrared. Okay. So it's so actually, it, it is fair to call it a mid infrared bulb as well, because it's, it's, it's about 40% near infrared, 40% mid infrared. Okay. I didn't know. So it's about the so same. It's about, it's about the same. And then there's about 15% far infrared. Okay. So good. it's all, but it's that. all infrared. And it's, it's interesting. I, I think it's uh, even better in a sense, if for heating the body for sauna benefit than the sun, because the the radiant heat benefits um, uh, come from the body absorbing light through the water absorption. And water mm -hmm. absorption starts in near infrared at 980 nanometers at the first overtone of water, but then uh, um, increases very quickly so that once you're into the mid infrared spectrum, 1500 to 3000 nanometers or so, you're getting strong water absorption. And so that's a really effective way to radiantly heat the body. So that's more mid infrared than you get from the sun. Okay. And also, I mean, far infrared also can heat the body. It's just not a, it's not a deep penetration. Yeah. Because the, of the, let's go into the, that now because okay. that's huge. Uh, so I think far infrared from my understanding is just a few millimeters of depth penetration. So, and this is another false claim that most all far infrared sauna, so they, they, they want to, convince you that it goes deep into the body but no that's near infrared that goes deep to, to like maybe a few inches deep into your body so yeah, and that and that it's complicated this the the biology of it. it's called water absorption but you know you know uh you know how we mentioned that incandescent technology is 130 years old mm -hmm. uh uh uh, in in agriculture farmers understood this for over 100 years then and you can see old and you can see old Philips heat lamp bulb product specification sheets that have a little uh, tissue penetration chart where they show, yes, uh, infrared A, aka near infrared, is much better for heating biological tissue because of tissue penetration. And that's because near infrared, uh, that's because water begins to absorb light in, in the near infrared region, but not 100%. As you proceed into the mid infrared and the far infrared, water absorption increases. That's just one of the protective mechanisms of our body is is the chromophore that is water. It it it, it um, and so it absorbs this light in different different ways. Near infrared light tends to penetrate several inches into the body. There's actually one NASA study that showed that water filtered near infrared penetrated like 
uh, a ridiculous amount, like 20 centimeters into the body, you know, five or six or seven inches. But on average, it's several inch penetration. Once you get out to this long wavelength, low energy infrared called far infrared, which starts at about 3000 and greater nanometers, the tissue penetration is is a, is a fraction of an inch. It's a, it's a millimeter to a few millimeters. Yeah, and we're talking yeah. about the average photons that go into the body. So with near infrared, uh, on average, there's some photons that, you know, are absorbed by water in the skin, but then others go in and get absorbed by water in, in the liver, you know, deep in the body. And then others, of course, hit the mitochondrial light receptor protein and activate photobiomodulation. So uh, every second that you're exposed to millions of near infrared photons, you're getting a radiant deeper penetrating heat that heats you from within and raises core body temperature more quickly because you're not just relying on the hot air around you. And that's what I've said for many, many years, uh, uh, basically since the beginning, the most efficient way to, the most effective way to heat biological tissue is using a near infrared centric light source uh, yeah. in terms of using light to heat the body and using light to heat the body via radiant heating will always be more efficient than than using just hot air or, or, or contact with water, like a hot tub or, or a bath. Yeah. You're the Harvey Kellogg of the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope I'm not that crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, well, at least when it strikes to light therapy and that, that, uh, our, that book that he wrote is freely available. You just have to type in the name of it on uh, a, your favorite surgeons, certainly not Google. And then because it was written prior to 1921, it's free, freely available. There's no copyright protection. So, um, the, uh, where was I going with this? Uh, well, I would just, we're just wrapping up the photobiomodulation discussion. I would know, just say, I, I, you know, you sure. don't get photobiomodulation from far infrared wavelengths, period. There's no oh, photobiomodulation oh, effect. So I'm sure not it's zero. It's just heat. Zero. Not biologically significant. Put it that way. It may be a fraction of a percent, but it's biologically significant. Uh, there, there's also, but with all wavelengths of light, and this is another benefit that you know, I don't know, it's kind of like EMF protection. It's less well understood and less well researched nowadays, but this idea of structuring water in the body and making it more bioavailable, putting it into a more bioactive state, all wavelengths of, of, of light do this. But Dr. Gerald Pollack mm -hmm. would say, and I actually heard him on a podcast recently mentioning this, that the best light uh, is, near to, is near infrared because that's the only light that penetrates bone tissue. If you're talking about structuring water and having these photobiomodulation benefits in the brain that's protected by the thickest bone tissue in the body, it's only a near infrared photon that is, is addressing and, and reaching that tissue to activate these, these healing systems. Yeah, and that's why when people ask me or discuss this, uh, my views on structured water, I think it's great. And if you want to drink it, it's fine, but it's nothing, nothing in comparison to having your body make its own structured water. And this happens naturally when you expose your skin to near infrared. That's the ultimate way to do it. And structured water is important because it puts energy into your body that is transferred to do biological processes, like the simple measure of your red blood cells, which are larger than tip, your typical capillary, they have to squeeze through there. And certainly the pressure generated from your heart uh, pulsing is or pumping is not going to be mm -hmm. sufficient force to get it through there. It's done through the, the energy that's contained in structured water. Yeah, we're 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 like seventy percent water by weight, but we're over ninety nine or ninety five percent water volumetrically. It, it just permeates all of our body. So you you to not have that part of our body working optimally is is definitely you know to our detriment. Yeah, and, and I want to just I recall what I was was wanted to share is that a personal experience and anyone could have this experience if they engage in uh, a near infrared sauna is that it, it, you can go into the sauna and your current model, I believe doesn't have an analog thermometer in it. So you can pick one up for $10. It has to go up to at least 200 degrees or so. Uh, but you can go into the sauna and see the temperature is like 160, 170. And you could there's a, there's a, there's a heat source. It's the bulbs. And if you're facing the bulbs, the front of your body, your chest and your, you know, the front of your body will start to sweat literally within a minute two at the most at that temperature. And the, well, the back, your back is absolutely not sweating, which mm -hmm. is a strong clinical confirmation supporting the fact that that heat is going in inches into your body and being absorbed by your body because it's not the ambient temperature that's causing it. It's the heat from the sauna. And I guess 
So that's, anyone can prove this to themselves. I mean, this is not rocket science. So I'm wondering from your perspective, if you have a feeling or an impression as to what the difference is, because, you know, I don't recommend people going much above 160 in the near infrared sauna. You can, but I don't think it's necessary because of this fact. So, you know, because some people are saying 180 to 200 degrees in a, maybe even higher in a, in a finished type sauna. Uh, what do you think the diff the additional temperature difference is in a, in a near infrared compared to a finished sauna? I mean, is well, it 20, 30 degrees? It's, 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 it's hard to compare the two side by side uh, because of the radiant heat, uh, you know, the, the, the radiant heating um, methodology of the near infrared sauna of the, of the incandescent bulb sauna is such that you don't use the ambient air temperature to heat you up really using this penetrating light. It's really, but you're, uh, but, you're still, but you're still getting it though. You're still getting the benefit of the ambient heat. You are, you are. And, and so I, I've always said you need to have the ambient air be above body temperature so the air is not cooling you down. You know, it's, you need to be in an enclosed space of some kind. You can't just have the panel in the middle of your room uh, that's, you know, air conditioned to 70 degrees uh, and, and provoke a sweat. You need to have the air above 100 degrees. But if you do that, you remove the air as a cooling force, and then you can sit in front of this effective radiant near infrared heating and heat up the body uh, very, very effectively. And this is, you know, this is one of the criticisms that's, uh, you know, out there that's leveled at sauna space in general. I believe Ari, Ritt, Ari Witten, who you, um, who you quote in your article, mentions this. Um, and this is a misunderstanding that I think exists out there because it's not an apples to apples comparison with finished saunas. Finished saunas require the air to be really hot because they're only using the air to heat the body near infrared saunas that are using incandescent bulbs use radiant, more efficient heat to heat the body. So even at a much lower ambient air temperature, um, you can provoke a strong sweat and provoke a elevated core body temperature increase. And I would argue that in some ways, maybe that's uh, uh, a more prudent approach for anyone who has any mm -hmm. sort of health issues of any kind. And there's a lot of people that, and that's pretty well understood. I think Dr. Rhonda Patrick mentions that in her article that if you're not acclimated to the sauna or you have a neurodegenerative condition or any health condition of any kind, or for whatever reason, you're not like you and I are, Dr. Mercola, where we're healthy, we're maintaining a healthy lifestyle, we're acclimated to sauna, you can't even handle a finished sauna. Uh, and, and, uh, and so for, uh, for what it's worth, uh, I think the near infrared sauna provides a much more tolerable, accessible experience that still achieves what you want to achieve. And by that, I mean, do you sweat and do you elevate your core body temperature? Me personally, I get into my sauna cold. I don't preheat it. And mm -hmm. I only use the four bulb Faraday sauna. So I have four bulbs and um, I, I usually lose one to two pounds of water in about 25 minutes and 28 to 30 minutes. I lose two pounds of water in, in about 15 to 18 minutes. I, I elevate my core body temperature uh, by three degrees or so. And then I start to sweat. And then I remain in there another five or 10 minutes. And I try to reach that sort of state of subjective exhaustion. Mm -hmm. That is sort of the goal of sauna. The, the goal of sauna is not just to be in a hot room. Uh, it's, it's to sweat and to elevate core body temperature and get that, that body response. So that's why there's people look at the finish. They look at the prom, predominant body of research into sauna. And it's predominantly on healthy men and women using finished saunas that are heated to 170 degrees. But there are other, there's a lot of other research out there that supports the use of infrared saunas in general. There's yeah. the wand therapies in Japan. There's these sauna suits even that are kind mm -hmm. of funny looking. And there's a really good cardiovascular and thermal regulatory uh, outcome benefits to using these, what look really silly, these sauna suits. So this stuff works. It's just a question of uh, how long does the person need or, or, or you know, uh, each person and, and depending on the person's uh, individual health profile and the modality of, of heat therapy they're using, uh, how long that they need to sit there to, to elevate core body temperature three degrees to lose the average one pound of sweat that you lose in a finished sauna session is really quite subjective. So for me, in my sauna, it's, it's 25 to 28 minutes. And so for someone who's, you know, really uh, is really healthy, really well acclimated to the sauna, they can handle these 
you know, maybe more bulbs, maybe an extra panel. Uh, but there's there's others like Dr. Wall's community of the MS, uh, Dr. Ken Charlin, a neuro uh, 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 neurodegenerative disease expert. He's actually based here in Missouri. Um, he's dealing with people, and, and and frankly, my customer base is it's usually people come to sauna space and they have a health problem. They're, yeah, they're yeah, not it's coming like from a, 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 a state biometric. where they've solved everything and they're they have amazing <laughs> discipline like you and I. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good point. Uh, and I, I really want to dive into that because it's you're, you're correct. That's probably the biggest uh, criticism that's been hurled at your company is that you don't get hot enough. And um, But actually, I think because they're not integrating the radiant uh, heat component into their evaluation and analysis, I think they're missing the boat and probably the not getting hot enough could more accurately be hurled at all, the vast majority of far infrared saunas that rarely go above 140. I mean, there's some that go higher, but not many. And some of them only get to 110, 120. Right. The, the, the average far infrared sauna is about 140 degrees. And if you talk yeah. to people who use it, they, they usually state that it takes them 40 minutes to an hour to sweat or yeah. more. And then that's yeah. after preheating for a significant amount of time beforehand. Yeah, um, and with no photobiomodulation. With no, no photobiomodulation. No, no benefits. Like, so you can make, you know, it just occurred to me as you were describing your process that that is a, a pretty good way to, to do sauna because you're doing it gently, but more importantly, while your body's building up this heat response so that it can generate the heat shock proteins, which actually modulate the repair and modification of your damage proteins that can lead to, to neurodegenerative conditions, like you mentioned, like Alzheimer's. So that you really do want to generate the heat shock, shock protein response. And if you're, if, if you're not in hot enough environment, you won't do that. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, you know, the, my guess is that the vast majority of farm for us is you're not getting hot enough. You're just simply, or you're not, you got to stay in there way too long and you, plus no photobiomodulation benefits, but, but ultimately you outline very accurately the two clinical criteria because there's a wide variability in response to this. So ultimately it's your personal individualized response that counts. And the simplest way is to measure, you know, people probably wondering how you measured a pound or two. Well, it's pretty simple actually. All you do is measure your naked weight before you go into the sauna and measure the naked weight after you go to the sauna. And then the difference is what, the, what you lost is water. Yep, so that's, so, it's a very simple gauge that anyone can do at home. They don't need a yeah, a lab yeah, or a clinic. Well, you need a lab. I mean, you need a, a scale, an accurate scale. You need a scale. But yeah. the, 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 the presume, and I'm not a healthcare provider, you know, I, uh, th that's, that's, what's, that's what we have you for and, and others out there in the industry. But for me, I, I like to know that what I'm doing works. And yes, yes. And so, and I like to have the tools to do it myself. So measuring the weight loss and then measuring the core body temperature using different thermometers are out there. And there's definitely variability between the armpit and, and the mouth temperature and infrared thermometers versus others. But you get a sense of elevated core temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. As you continue to, you know, continue to measure this and, and gauge your sauna sessions as you, as you as you start using sauna, if you're new to sauna, and you'll see that you're getting the L when you get about a three degree temperature increase, that's when the body begins to sweat strongly. And mm -hmm. then if you can kind of and again, subjectively and cautiously watching yourself, if you can reach that point of subjective of exhaustion, what uh, is this referred to as the dynor uh, dynorphin response, where you kind of feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually what you kind of want to go for, because that is when you've, you've kind of maxed out your benefits of this hormetic stress therapy, and you haven't taken it too far. And you get the benefit, the endorphin benefits afterwards, and all the benefits you get. And and, and it can be, uh, if you have your, if you have a, you know, if you're well acclimated to the sauna, that will take you longer to get there. But if you are dealing with health conditions and maybe neurodegenerative issues, I have some customers, Dr. McCole, who start out with two bulbs mm -hmm. and they're only using two bulbs and, and they're only sitting there for five or 10 minutes. And they just, and they've been contraindicated uh, to get heat exposure to their head initially. And they may take six months to build up to using the sauna as, as, or more even as, as using the sauna as you and I would use the sauna. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's it's better safe than sorry. You go slowly if you need to, there's, there's not anything wrong with that process. Yeah, and so, and so, yeah, you can measure it yourself and then, you know, if you're getting the sweat response 
and you're getting the elevated core body temperature, you've had a good solid sauna session. And you know that if you just do that one to four times a week, you're going to get these benefits that you read about all that everybody's talking about in the literature. And of course you can do lab testing to mm -hmm. further buttress your, your, you know, your appreciation of your results. And uh, I don't know what you recommend, um, what kind of well, profiles you I, recommend. I, I, it probably isn't the most accurate because it's blood levels, but uh, Genova Diagnostics has a test called NutriVal that I'm particularly fond of. It's not a cheap test, but it, it is, provides so much benefits. It, it actually shows you your linoleic acid too, uh, content. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I had mine done recently, it, it was it, it rates it subjectively from a zero to a ten, and there was a zero. And the healthcare practitioner that was doing the test for me said she's just she never saw a zero before. <laughs> I got the first zero, so it <laughs> me measures mercury, arsenic, lead, and cadmium, I think levels. So um, anyway, because hmm. because of the criticisms of the the temp the temperature being insufficient, you were kind enough to. Um, not acknowledge, but uh, consent to <laughs> creating a, di a different, an advanced type of sauna that has two sets of bulbs, um, mm. two, two basically four panels of bulbs that I'm using in my existing sauna now. And you're, you, right before I went on, you talked about a new panel you were, this, you were going to resurrect. It had three bulbs, which essentially allows it to be used in almost any home circuit because it's under 15 amps. Mm -hmm. um, but the I did notice a big difference when I do, do that. It's actually my preference, but so that's to, in my mind. It, it, after you're sharing all this, it, it's pretty clear that the vast majority of people may only need four bulbs. And it really, I mean, you could do an eight bulb system, yet you don't. You still continue to use the four, uh, and and you just need to be in the sauna longer. Yeah, you but just that longer you just is stay not longer. downside. You're getting more photo, photobiomodulation benefit. Now, admittedly, there's a biphasic response and you can overdo the infrared exposure, right? But I, but I personally live in that modern lifestyle where I don't get as much sun as you. I'm yeah, yeah, working yeah. a lot indoors in the, in the, in the shop here and mm -hmm. just a lot of indoor activity. I don't have an ideal uh, light diet with regard to daily, you know, morning and evening sun exposure. So for me, it's crucial that yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. So I get it you, you're in the sauna. not different, much different than much of your customer base. So I think that you can make a pretty strong argument that a four bulb system is all that's needed. Um, but if you really want to go the full the full Monty, I think it's like <laughs> seven or eight bulb system will will really get the temperature up. And and I'm wondering, you had mentioned your temperature goes up three degrees. What your what the absolute value? Because I think mine goes up four or five degrees, typically closer to five. Because I'm typically coming in the high hundred uh, twos, maybe hundred. Yeah, um, it, it just depends on how long I stay in. I usually get three degree increase after about what, sixteen or eighteen minutes. But by what, the time your, I'm done, I'm getting up final, to you know over four degrees, sometimes what's your, five. What's your final the temperature you're coming out with? Um, you're see. doing oral, I would assume, right? Yeah, oral. I, I've tried those infrared thermometers on the head. The yeah, year, it's but just, they seem unreliable. Yeah, I, I don't I mean, know. I just don't infra, get infrared temperature readings. sensors are great, but not really for taking your body temperature, is my experience. I agree. But I usually get over 102 degrees, uh, okay, somewhere yeah. over 102, which yeah. is about, for me, is I don't about think, four I don't think you, degrees. I don't think Fahrenheit. you want to go over 103. I mean, I ca occasionally we'll hit the low 103s, but typically. I, I, it's, it's a matter of, it's a matter of dis discipline and acclimation. You know, in the beginning, you don't want to do that and you don't want to overdo it. But, and, and that's why I recommend, you know, everybody just go with the, you know, what we do now, our four bulb system and, yeah, and, then, yeah. it, and, and you build up and you acclimate and you, and then you start to, that has a positive influence on the other areas of your life and you correct your diet and you do these other things and you slowly get to a point where, yeah, I can stay in longer now. I can handle more and that's great, but I would urge everybody to just take a really precautionary prudent approach and start out with that. And, and that's why, you know, I've always offered a long trial for our product. And for some people who are in the, in the, that have health conditions or neurodegenerative issues, they may take a long time to appreciate, wow, wow. Um, you know, a month or two even to appreciate and other people who are maybe young, uh, are, are physically fit, do a lot of, uh, uh, exercise, a uh, healthy lifestyle, you know, they'll be able to handle more, more quickly, but eventually you know those who reach a, a a level of like you have where you're you're a super healthy guy you're working out every day you're you've used the sauna for years you know you can take it you, you can potentially uh increase the number of bulbs uh and that's mm -hmm. why 
uh, like you, like you mentioned, I we are we're, we're resurrecting. We're we're bringing it out of the closet. Uh, the the very first sauna space panel was a three bulb panel that we offered back in 2015, I think, uh, uh, or 16. And so we're 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 bringing that back uh, into the fore, and we'll be offering that starting I think next month, uh, this summer. Uh, so summer 2022. Yeah, and it's a great solution be, uh, for the i would argue the minority of people who leave that level who reach that level of of optimal yeah. health yeah. that they can handle more and they can add in a three bulb a th uh the core bulb is or the core panel is four bulbs that's a thousand watts plus three more bulbs 1750 watts which is about 14 and a half amps it's just under the 15 amp um threshold that is the standard household breaker you have in, in all breakers of the home and in, in, in American households is 15 amps. So the seven bulb system can be kind of plugged in anywhere, more or less in any standard circuit. You could potentially use an eight bulb system, which is what you have, but it requires a, a 20 amp dedicated circuit. And that's not so common throughout homes. You see yeah, that but in kitchens easy, and baths. Yeah, but it's easy to swap out. You can you can do that. You can swap it out, and you can potentially have that. But but again, it's it, at, at the same time, you know, it's 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 uh, also something that you can achieve through just staying yeah, in a I little get bit it. longer. Right, you could do it like you like you personally do, and you can easily put an eight bulb system, but you chose not to for the reasons you explained, and, and that's a pretty valid argument. So uh, one of the uh, okay, so I, I, I'm confident that many people watching this. I said, oh, darn, you make such a compelling argument for the near infrared sauna, but I've got a far infrared sauna. Well, nothing to worry about because <laughs> all you have to do, and I want your comments on this for almost any near far infrared sauna is take out the bench because you're going to have to do that because there's not enough room there if you leave the bench in, uh, attach some hooks to one of the walls and you could put hang one or even two panels uh, on there. And you've got a, a, a sauna, so just like literally for the price of a panel, nothing more. Yeah, that's absolutely uh, absolutely possible. So uh, our panels have a, a really convenient handle on the back of them that can be allow the panel to be hung on the wall, so it's secure and safe, and it's it's uh, you know it's it's fixed in place. And they can do this really in any enclosure. So most commonly, people will have a farm for its sauna. They want to upgrade to near infrared technology, they can do exactly what you said with one panel or even two panels, again, with caution as they as they get to that point uh, over time. But you can also do that in any enclosed space, in a small closet, it, even, uh, you know, uh, we offer a shower conversion uh, kit. There's, it really doesn't matter what the, what the enclosure is. It's just an enclosure that, it's just a space that needs to be enclosed. So you can really, uh, do this in a wide variety of enclosed spaces and the smaller the better as long as it's big enough to allow for the two foot clearance from the bulbs and ideally the ability to rotate that's why it's really nice to take the bench out in the standard far for its sauna and, and either get one of our stools or purchase a, a seat of your own and um and do the near infrared style sauna protocol which involves um the traditional protocol is a quarter turn rotation about every five minutes yeah. I know you've just been kind of rotating front to back in your. Well, in your I, I, it's, a, it's a derivative of yours. And it occurred to me because if you're sitting down, you are clearly not hitting some of the largest muscle groups of your body. So I just faced the sauna initially uh, and then sitting down, then I face, then I turn my back to the sauna sitting down, but then I rotate again, but I get off the stool and stand up. Mm -hmm. Now I have a, an eight panel system. So standing up, literally exposes almost my whole body to that. Whereas a four bulb system, it wouldn't, but still you're gonna get enough reflection and stuff. But so anyway, when you stand up, you hit your quads initially. And when you turn around your hamstrings. Right. So, uh, and those are huge muscle groups. As I said, the two of the biggest muscle groups in your body. So I, 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 to me, that works well. If I get, for some reason, I'm more sensitive to the back of my body to the heat. And I don't know the reason for that is maybe because my, the current enclosure I have is not, I'm a little bit further away when I'm in the front where I'm in the back at my, I'm six foot tall. So the, I have to bend my head to fit into the sauna. So I just, I'm a little bit closer to the bulbs. 
But so when that happens, I get too hot, I just rotate and then I'm getting so somewhat of a side exposure. Yeah. And so, and, and then it's what you said before, how it's such a directional radiant heat that the front heats up and, and the back is not, you know, being directly heated. And so when you rotate in a near infrared sauna, you, the so, sort of, you're, you're getting, you're giving the side that was just heated a chance to rest a little bit. And then the blood starts pooling to the new side that's focusing, you know, that, that has the focus of the heat and the bulbs. And you get a, a, a more efficient, vigorous heating of the torso and this blood shunting effect that goes on through some kind of a rotation, but also you're not overexposing kind of any mm -hmm. side. You get a side, a chance to rest. So another way to just make this, the sauna experience more tolerable is, is through rotation. Yeah. So you could do rotation or not, but yeah, you could take a panel and basically convert and upgrade any small enclosed space. It's more or less a volume of, um, you know, 70 cubic feet or so what you see in a farm for its sauna a cabinet style enclosure and even built in saunas as well. And, and some homes have custom built in saunas in our product. You can also add in uh, a, one of our single bulb units, the photon at the bottom. Some people uh, that's typically recommended for people who have, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, edema or like you know uh, problems in their lower extremities and they can get direct photobiomodulation onto their foot or their leg but that also increases the heat uh, uh somewhat as well uh, especially down low so it's all these are all ways that you can upgrade and, and incorporate near infrared style uh, sauna technology into into your life whatever you have whether you have a, a large home or a tiny little apartment or just the only thing you have is a little little closet in your stairwell we have yeah you know many customers who are making well, that work with got, our panels it's got to be enough i mean i think the dimensions are it's well six foot tall i think it's 60 inches from the back wall where the panels are held to the to the door it should be about 60 inches yeah our, our panels are about nine inches deep plus two feet of clearance from the chest to the panel so you know you need something that's at least four feet deep at the minimum at the yeah, minimum. and and um, sixty inches would be a lot. Sixty more would be probably. Yeah, this way you can move back a little bit because it's shocking what literally a few inches will do. So you can really modulate and titrate the dosages you're getting. But but again, uh, it's a protocol that dates back uh, over a hundred years. Uh, so it's yeah, very safe. Years, I mean, people but... have been doing this for a long time. It's a very safe way to to do sauna to heat the body. And now, as we've gone over today, the photobiomodulation benefits can't be underestimated. Yeah. Anymore. I mean, there's such a strong argument to support the, using this type of sauna. But one of the final criticisms that I think we've just literally obliterated was the cost of your sauna. And yeah, the price of the the sauna, the, the EMF free Faraday cage sauna is a bit high. But if you just go and purchase the panels, I mean, you're significantly less than any but any far infrared sauna. Yeah, the, 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 far infrared, the, the, the big cabinet style saunas are can be uh, also can be uh, you know spendy but they're also kind of cumbersome you know um, um again back to the the average quotidian sauna user or the the sauna enthusiast is not one who's in in the best of health they're looking for the sauna for solution so they don't necessarily want this big 500 pound construction that they need to set up themselves they they want something that is more manageable um and and yeah uh just it's however you want to start, you can start, you don't even need a, initially, if you want to try out the sauna stuff, you could literally heat up the water in, in your bathtub as hot as possible and get in there to, to appreciate, hey, actually sweating and heat, this is, this is interesting, this is making me feel good. But you can also, yeah, you can, you can, if you already have, a, most people already have a farm for a sauna who are sauna enthusiasts out there, you can just get one of our our four bowl panels to, to upgrade it. Yeah. Um, and, and you're done and you're good. And, and, and certainly if you want more portability and you want our design, you know, you can upgrade to that later. You can even potentially add in a three bulb unit. If you reach your level of, of discipline and, and of good health. Um, it's all just, all that matters is you do something, you know, you, you take, take action now to, to start on that journey of, of sweating. Cause that's, for me, that was the most impressive thing also in the photobiomodulation studies is this is this is this is a nutrient for our bodies and, and for our lives we we need this on a on a frequent basis we can't it's not a pill it's not something you take once it's not a surgery it's something that you need to figure out how to incorporate into your life on on again a weekly basis so using near infrared light to heat the body is the most efficient quickest way to get her done 
uh, and get that sweat response uh, without, you know, spending an hour and a half on your therapy. You know, nobody has any time for anything. And, and, uh, and, and also, yeah, I mean, uh, cost wise, uh, you know, a panel compared to some of these built in saunas or, or these very large uh, cabinet saunas is it's, it's a lot more accessible for. Yeah. For and so say you, you use a room in your house, the, the, the panel that you offer, it, it's the most extraordinary cost value proposition because literally it's hard to imagine that not lasting for decades, probably the rest of your life. The rest of your life, and you've moved. You can move five. You can move every year. <laughs> it's it's built to last. Like it's built to it. last. We've yeah, got just, customers from yeah five years ago who still are using their panels. Even the bulbs. People ask, well, well, what about these bulbs? Are they going to wear out? These bulbs are actually rated for five thousand hours. <laughs> so that's like, you know, even before we came out with my own thermal eye bulb that it took me many years to develop, I still have customers who. Uh, I ship them their original panels, Dr. Mercola, with the, with heat lamps, you know, standard heat lamps, and they're still using them six, seven years later. So it's a replaceable product, but it does last a long time. You take care of it; it'll pretty much last forever. It's a it's a it's a one time yeah. lifetime. At least a lifetime. It'll last a lifetime. The very few things last. It'll last you your health span. Yeah, yeah. So if and interestingly, that health span is going to be considerably increased if you're diligently and regularly using this. So, and it's just a, a caution, final caution on this is that more is not necessarily better. And I've made that mistake. I was doing sauna every day. And then I realized it's probably not the great, greatest strategy because it's just too much. It's like, you don't want to exercise every day. You want to take some time off. But with sauna, you're losing these toxins. They're clearly coming out through your sweat, but you can also lose beneficial mi minerals. So, um, and electrolytes. So one of the things that there's two, two additions that I recommend in sauna use. One is uh, we actually came out with an electrolyte uh, pack, powder pack. And I use two of those, put them in a, in a quart of water. And I add a little glycine, a little monk fruit. And usually I'm work, doing this before workouts or I do a workout before. So I use a little hydroxymethylbutyrate. And I drink that quart about, I try to finish it at least a half hour before, maybe an hour before I do the sauna. So it has enough time for the water to get into my cells. And then the other thing I use, and I want you to talk about that, the electrolytes and the minerals and the frequency, but then also is um, the aspect of protecting your head, which you referenced earlier. You don't really want it to get too hot. So I, w I went to Amazon. I found a little cap that... Uh, it's a wrap around piece of a device that goes Velcro to the top of to the, your head and you put it in the freezer and it's got these little gel packs in there that freeze up. So it really keeps your head cool when you're in sauna. Yeah. Uh, as, as far as the latter half of your, your comment about the head, yes, we want to be careful not to overheat the head, but we still want, we want heat shock protein response and we want photobiomodulation there. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, the, I, the first so five minutes, I don't put it, put it on. I put especially it on. that's a, that's another, you know, uh, precaution to have when you have uh, a super sauna, like a, a seven bulb style is, is to be very careful with the head. One, one solution is to, our, our, our panels have multiple switches. So one solution mm -hmm. is to turn off the switches that are directly aligned with the head to reduce the amount of heat there. You could also cool it off though, like you're saying with a cold pack or yeah. something, but also, the, the single lamp therapy that a lot of people do is a localized PBM and heat therapy that using our single bulb product, um, it, it's only recommended to use it on the head 10 minutes per hour. So that's a limitation that you don't have really on the rest of the body. If you're doing your foot or your gut or other areas, you, you put the one bulb uh, 18 to 30 inches from the naked flesh, and you can keep it on there for a half an hour or more more or less, mm -hmm. but on the head we're, or the throat, we're very careful to limit our exposure. So it's, it's something where, again, if you, once you, when you take a precautionary approach and a, and a, and a slow methodical approach, you know what you can handle and, and you don't overdo it. Um, but yeah, regarding the former, uh, you, not only are you losing electrolytes, basic sodium chloride and other potassium, other basics, you're also, when you, when you pull these toxins out of your cells, you need to replace them uh, with the healthy minerals that they were supposed to be there in the first place. Like the, the cadmium sits in the, in the DNA and it, and it takes the place of, of zinc in the zinc finger uh, epigenetic uh, structure. So, so when we lose that cadmium, you know, that's just one of a million examples of where you need to replace that with a healthy mineral. So it, it also argues for 
having this be a part of, uh, uh, of a healthy lifestyle, which includes, you know, food is medicine, a real, a real healthy diet, but also, yeah, supplementing somehow with minerals and electrolytes can be, uh, can be quite beneficial. Most sauna enthusiasts really recommend that. Uh, so you got to be careful with that. That's another reason to go slow and safe and prudent. But one other thing I would mention, another reason to be slow and safe and prudent in all this is everybody's different and you have what are called detox reactions. Mm -hmm. So some people call them healing reactions in the, in the world of addiction, it's called a detox reaction. You get withdrawals mm -hmm. and, and you, uh, it's really specifically, it's you experience the symptoms of, of a poison or a toxin as it's being detoxed. And, and, it, and so that's something where you, uh, you don't want to overwhelm your organs of elimination. You want to activate the skin as the most powerful elimination organ. It's, it's one of the three systems we don't use. You know, we, we urinate, we defecate every day, but, but we don't, unfortunately in the modern, uh, lifestyle, we don't perspire every day. So we want to activate the skin, but just like with the light, it's hormetic stress therapy. You don't want to overdo it because it takes the body time to correct itself. Uh, it takes time. And so if you do overdo, you can have a healing detox reaction where you, you may get a headache. You may, uh, get really, uh, fatigue all of a sudden, uh, some people experience, you know, just the symptoms related to toxins. There's a thousand different healing reactions you can have. And so to make that the speed bumps in the journey, uh, as gentle as possible, again, just go slow with things. Okay, good. And then your light bulb on the right side of your body, the, the photon beam, uh, is a reminder that that is a strategy that I've also incorporated into, into my, uh, personal workspace. Uh, after, I think it was Brian Hoyer, you helped me understand that most every window in your home has uh, filters in it that essentially prevents the majority, not all of it, but the majority of the near infrared coming into your house. So it looks like you have full spectrum light coming through your windows, but you don't. You, you don't. You got visible light coming through. You're blocking the near infrared and you're blocking, yeah. you know, uh, some of the UV too. Uh, but when you put that bulb on, it does amazing things. So, you know, I, I must have that bulb on more than eight hours a day, maybe 10 or 12 hours a day when I'm in my office. So uh, when I'm walking on the beach, obviously it's not on, but you know, when I'm doing an interview in my studio here, it's not on, but most of the time it is on. So uh, just a really good way to increase your, uh, I wouldn't say digestion, but absorption would be much better. Absorption of near infrared is really a food that your body requires or a nutrient might be more accurate. It is, and, and, and I'm not, I, you know, uh, to be clear, I'm, this is not, I'm not doing this in a targeted fashion. It's not like pointed. No, no, it's, not, right, right. it's just in the, it's just in, in, in the, in the general area. And it does a couple of things. It, it's, it does essentially what you said. It replaces the missing component, this huge near infrared component that if we were just outside, it would be right. in our light. You wouldn't need, uh, you wouldn't need it if you're outside. You we wouldn't would need, need it. it. But since we're indoors, we have the low E glass on the windows and also indoors we have a lot of junk light. We have a lot of blue LED and fluorescent light that is, has a flickering effect that's stressful to the nervous system. And blue light is causes free radical formation. I mean, you've covered that in depth. Even in the mainstream now, they have blue light blockers and other things because it's, it's referred to as high energy visible light. It, it's damaging to us. And since it, there's no near infrared coming from these LED and fluorescent light sources, unlike the sun, it doesn't have that healing um, antioxidant building, uh, component to it. So putting this just in your interior space doesn't just replace the near infrared. It also mitigates, uh, the perceived exposure to the flickering line, the blue light. You can measure this with mm -hmm. a spectrometer or a flickering light meter. You can see how just having a photon in this area next to you reduces the amount of, of blue light and flickering light that you, your body perceives. And, and long story short, if you work at a computer, this thing is lovely just because just computer work is so stressful and these are LED screens and really not yeah. ideal to, to live this way, but we have to. <laughs> well, in my case, you know, I, I was really careful and purchased a monitor that was flicker free and essentially I have a filter on it. So there's virtually no blue light coming out or very, very little. So, mm -hmm. but you're right for most environments, that's not the case. And, and one of the, it's interesting because you can turn that light on the photon bulb that you have, 250 watt the infra infrared bulb. And you can have the flicker monitor. And if you have a monitor uh, that measures really high, 
uh, you'll get, you know, it, it usually is an audible signal to it also. It'll, with a bulb off, it'll be blaring and beeping really rapidly. And then you turn the bulb on and it virtually disappears. So it, it seems to mask the flicker issues pretty well. And, uh, but just general, I, I think that's a minor benefit because you can mitigate, as I said, by purchasing the right type of True. monitor. And, and essentially, I, I, the, I have, the lights are rarely ever on in my office. I mean, almost never, you know, so it's not an issue. Uh, but supplying it as a, as a nutrient that your body requires because you're living indoors most of your life is a good strategy. It, it is. And, and people, we, we talked a lot about science and, and nutrients and, and all the cellular um, in the weeds type of talk. But if you just imagine yourself next to the campfire, you imagine yourself next to the mm -hmm. fireplace, that's what it feels like. And and the feeling you're getting there that you can't quite put your foot, finger on, but it's lovely, is, is the, the significant amount of near-infrared absorption that you're getting. And you just, if you don't have something like this anymore, or you're not living with a lot of sun, or, or like our ancestors did, you're, you're missing that. And, and it, it doesn't just affect the health of your cells. It definitely affects your brain and your mood and your outlook and, and just feeling good. Yes, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, as we we started this conversation, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of sauna and have been for two decades. But recent appreciation just absolutely confirms how much more important it was than I ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. And it's primarily for the near infrared. And I've just uh, I I learned in this interview that your bulbs were forty percent. I thought they were fifteen, but it's forty percent near infrared. So it, in my mind, this is one of the most important biohacks or lifestyle advanced, I, I would classify this as a relatively advanced lifestyle strategy. I mean, certainly just getting out the sun is more important if you're going to, if you have a choice uh, or, you know, eating the right foods, but clearly once you, one, you want to move towards adopting relatively early on, the investment is not that significant. Yes, it's high for many people, but again, remember something that's going to last you pretty much the rest of your life. This, this is not something that you have to replace this, these panels, they're going to last for decades and the bulbs probably last for five, 50,000 hours. Most people, it's going to take a lot of time. Hours, five of oh, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 hours it's, is a it's, lot. Of it's hours. years. It's years. It's years. It's many years. So, you know, even if, even then you're just replacing a bulb. So it's, you know, it's a really, you know, those, that would be many years of use. And I've yet to replace a bulb actually, other than ones that exploded or got broke because I dro dropped some sweat on them accidentally. Which can happen, but you know, with the shields you got around them, it's mm -hmm. pretty safe because these bulbs get really hot. You can burn yourself if you're not careful, so you have to be careful here or cautious. Yeah, and that's oh, why that, you know we developed this cage, this stainless. Yeah, that cage, cage is. I like it so much better than the, than the first. You no, know, this has been running this whole time, so it's yeah. It's uh, oh wow! It's I didn't know. I didn't realize. I didn't notice that. So you could actually touch the cage. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that, but it's it's, but, but you it's could, the important but thing is to not touch the bulb itself. Yeah, yeah, because the older ones you had were the thicker, they had the thicker bars, and those did get hot. You could burn yourself on those. Yeah, and the and the Dr. Kellogg saunas didn't have any protection <laughs> at all. They were just the bulb. You you had to keep your body close. Uh, but you know the 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 technology has advanced uh, in the yeah, last yeah. hundred years. The safe use technology. Well, I'm really deeply appreciative and grateful for your commitment to providing this as a resource and a strategy that pretty much is available to almost anyone. And uh, because it's such a radically foundational, important upgrade to your health that will really help for the long run, it's, you know, especially these neurodegenerative diseases, you know, I mean, mm. Alzheimer's isn't pretty. I, I mean, it's, yeah, it's good, nice to good, feel good and, and healthy and have a lot of energy, but you know, when you lose your mind, it's, it's definitely And, and there's disturbing, more so for your yeah, there are really disturbing incidents of early, what's called early onset Alzheimer's. Mm. Yeah, which is and, and, below the age of. 60 or 50, 60. But disturbingly common now. It's, mm -hmm. it's, that's not the, that's not the, the normal human uh, lot. No. You know, it's not our condition. That's a weird modern abnormality. Yeah. So we, we've, you know, modern society offers many advantages, but you've got to be careful. There's a lot of exchanges for convenience for health. So this is one of the ways you can help remediate against that, you know, excreting all the toxins, getting the massive dose of near infrared. Uh, and uh, creating heat shock proteins, you know, bing, bing, bing. So three wins. All right. Anything else you want to add before we go? 
Uh, that's it. If you uh, want to learn more, you can go to my website, sauna.space. I have this, a lot no, it's of- just sauna, I thought it was saunaspace.com. Uh, they go to the same place. It's okay, sauna, okay. sauna space, saunaspace.com. You can just uh, search sauna space. But I, I, for those who want to dive deep into the literature, uh, we have a really nice learn section to explain our light technology and our spectrum and sort of the general uh, and the EMF stuff, uh, if you're interested in that. But if you go to the bottom of the website, you can click on my research archive. And I've curated a lot of literature. It's a growing database where I've sorted it by topic. So if you're interested in the skin or the eyes or the sauna or, or uh, you know, brain health and other stuff, you can go to that, click on that topic, and you can see a growing body of research uh, using photobiomodulation and sauna um, to, um, to improve health outcomes. So that's a great resource for people. And that's all on sauna.space. All right. Well, thanks for everything. Amazing resource and tool you've, you've put together and made available for everyone to access.